your life doesn't come into meaning when you are with somebody your life already has great meaning i'll just sit here and wait until god blesses me with somebody in general i think it's really um important to respect that everything has its time and place and that god's timing is better than anybody else's timing um and you cannot rush a good thing fact then uh number four she mentioned that there is nothing that can fulfill us like jesus and i think this is something really important to to make sense of that before marriage um after marriage um it's always him and we can only ask so much of our future spouse um, we can't look at somebody and go to them for our happiness and expect them to just transform our lives god is the only thing that can fulfill us obviously people want a a godly man or a godly woman but it is important to not expect um your spouse to re replace or uh be on the same level field as jesus because fact is they will fail but before marriage god was that with you and after you get married god will still be there and he will continue pouring into your life in a way that your husband or wife will never really truly be able to and that is the firm foundation that your life should be built on now and your life should continue to be built on when you get married no man he could be the best man in the world and he still really wouldn't be able to compete with god it's just a fact right so now moving on to the interesting one non-christian christian relationships at the beginning what they did was they referenced 2 corinthians 6 14 to 15 which i will read out loud just now for those that are interested the you know maybe this is your first time hearing about corinthians um it was written by paul the apostle um to the church in corinth paul the apostle was essentially helping them to really find their feet as a church they were a new church and he was trying to help them to stay on track to um, instill all that they needed to know about god and who they were in god so that they wouldn't be uh, swayed by anything that anybody else was trying to teach them any other false teachings of that time it says do not be yoked together with unbelievers for what do righteousness and wickedness have in common or what fellowship can light have with darkness what harmony is there between Christ and Belial also known as Belial um, or what does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? I think this is a really strong image that is created because, you know, to be yoked, for example. And where one moves, the other moves. And I think that is a really strong image that, for example, if you ma imagine the man and wife, and say the man is a christian but the woman is not a christian and i don't know imagine they have a fight and the man goes to pray but the woman goes to worldly things so then now you've got this like thing between them that is literally tugging against the tension because it's they're not going in the same direction whereas if they were both christians um and in a Christian marriage you understand that it's you know your one flesh so it's not the two fleshes going out against each other it's the one flesh fighting against the issue and I think you know there's so much power in being aware
aware of that because I think why on earth would you want to be with an unbeliever as a believer? It's such a problematic space to occupy. I mean, personally, I honestly would rather be single for my whole life than be married to somebody that's an unbeliever because I just don't know how you navigate life. I mean, how do I bring up the children if I want them to know who God is and you don't know who God is? You know, how do I instill morals in them? You know, what happens when somebody's lost? You know, like you lose a job or something and you're, you know, I'm built, I know my firm foundation is in Christ, but you, you don't know that your foundation is in, what, what, what your foundation is in your job that you've just lost. Um, I just think, yeah, no thank you. <laughs> no thank you. I'd rather not. I'll pass on that one. Um, but, yeah, so they reference that part of, Corinthians and I just love it I think it's so powerful like do not be yoked together with unbelievers for what do righteousness and wickedness have in common or what uh, fellowship can light have with darkness literally it's like that is such a powerful image of light and dark you know somebody that is that is in in God and that Christ lives within them and they know him and and they they love him and they build their life on him that is pure light and they become a light to those around them um, but then somebody living in the world and uh, partaking in the things of the world is just darkness and I just I just don't know how this is going to work. I just don't see how it would work. Um, yeah, it's just really important to think about who you're yoked with. You know, don't be yoked together with somebody that's not going in the same direction as you. Moving on to the next bit. Oh yeah, I just realised I didn't mention, but this section was by Pascal and Esther Pardini. And they were super good. Esther was getting so fired up and sharing so much wisdom and I just love people that can share good quality wisdom that then I can share and really um, yeah just keep the ball rolling you know in terms of finding somebody that is you know Christian and somebody that you believe you should marry she said just because they are at church it doesn't make them a christian i'll repeat it for the people at the back just because they are at church it doesn't make them a christian fact i mean and then what i noted down is like she slash he could be in every single group that ever existed at church he could know everyone maybe he doesn't miss a Sunday maybe um, you know the lady that you have your eyes on uh, maybe she sits on the fr in the front row maybe she looks like a keen bean she's like yes I'm in here for the word I'm gonna sit at the front and maybe he lifts his hand a little higher during the worship just to catch that you know catch that blessing all of these things you know we have to be wary i mean the bible tells us to be to be wary in general um throughout our lives of people that are trying to deceive us and i think um you know what uh, esther said is what do they smell like not literally but do they have a jesus scent about them and the thing is the more time that you spend around somebody the more time you listen to what they are saying and what they are doing because oftentimes people love to say things but their actions do not line up appropriately with what they have uttered out of their mouth because you know as the saying goes you know talk is cheap 
I don't like people to talk to me too much about what they're going to do. I just want need them to show me that they're actually going to do it. Do they have a Jesus scent? Is there something about them, the way that they operate, the way that they speak, the way that they move, the way that people react um, around them? Is there something about them that gives them a Jesus scent? You can tell if somebody um, doesn't have a Jesus scent pretty often. Um, you know, pretty often you can figure that out quite quickly. Um, but you know, you have to be careful because there are so many people, there are actors in the church that haven't even got a degree in acting. Do you get what I mean? There are, there are, there are people that look like the ideal that are not the ideal. Um, but something that Esther really like a piece of advice that she gave us which I think is invaluable is to ask God what he thinks of a person and what image that gave me in my in my head and it's actually something that I may sketch in the future because sketching is my new thing but it gave me the impression of like a child because I mean as a child I was super super shy and um, as a child sometimes you can't really discern whether you know you know what it is about somebody but you know sometimes you see a child and they don't for some reason they don't seem to like the person that's in front of them but they can't figure it out so what they do is they shield themselves by their mother or their father and I think in this in this instance if we are unsure of the person that is in front of us we need to go before God and we need to shield ourselves in him and get him to go before us and to tell us you know who is this person reveal to me who they really are is this somebody that I can trust is this somebody that you know is a godly person that really is who he says he is or that he tries to give out to those around him or she you know this could apply to men as well like is she really who she says she is you know is she really who she seems to be um and you know and i think it's really important to put god in the middle you know so from the start he is always in the middle of, of you and the other person from the start you are in you are inviting god into this and you're saying god i don't know but i know that you know so please lead the way you know close doors that are meant to close open doors that are meant to open you know if he's not meant to be here if she's not meant to be here if i'm not meant to entertain this person remove them from this situation remove them from my mind you know give me a sign that i usually say when i pray uh, i've got this thing i'm like make it so clear that like even if i'm having a day where i just don't like want to see it like and let me see it like make it so sh clear that even it really like an idiot would be able to see it like stupidly clear like like so ridiculously clear that i can't even like be like oh yeah no i didn't see it i mean i need it to be like so so clear but and i think this is an idea that can be taken you know anywhere in life but you know in the midst of any confusion in life you know whether it's confusion around your health confusion around your job situation, confusion in your family, confusion in day-to-day -day life, maybe there's uh, any issue, anxieties, um, battles that, that you're having internally, I think, you know, it's, it's important to always put God in the middle, just to recognise that he is always there um, and, you know, no situation, no person, Oh, what's the, the, there's a scripture that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Don't know which part of the Bible that is, but it's literally, you know, the enemy comes in different forms and, oh, and the thing is, um, the devil has a way of, uh, of hiding or, or or appearing as light so sometimes you can meet somebody that um, they look really promising it's like oh they're so nice I like this person they're really great 
but the spirit behind them is not a god spirit and i think it's really important um in any area of your life to pray over your life to pray into the lives of others and to just um really ask god to keep speaking to you and to develop an understanding of hearing and discerning his voice um because oftentimes uh you know i mean it's like in the bible the devil appeared and quoted scripture and made himself sound like a god um, and if the devil can quote scripture and sound like god best believe he can start trying to sound like god to then confuse us and i think it's really important that yes we put god before us but you know during this season this is such a perfect season of singleness to really listen to god develop our understanding of god and and um you know i mean god speaks to everybody in different ways and it, this is a great time to really develop you know how is he talking to you um what's the you know how does he show himself in your life um so that you know when you move on to the next season of your life you are prepared but uh yeah i think that is all let me just double check that I haven't missed out anything that is of great importance. Yeah, no, that's all. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. At the end of the day, this channel, yes, it's about, you know, food and creation and so, um, and all that sort of stuff. But at the end of the day, for me, yes, it's important to feed the body, but I think it's also important to feed the mind and feed the spirit. And I hope that you get something out of it. And yeah, I will see you in the next one. Which will probably be a normal baking video. However, I will get back to do my Bake the Bible videos. It should they take a little bit longer to do because I really want to make sure that they are quality videos in the sense that I've taken the time to sit down, uh, get into the word, meditate on it, research and make sure that my facts are right so that I can really put out good quality videos that can be impactful because yes I could put out a quick video but I really I think it's important to have um, like to put a heart behind it because you know you just never know who's going to see your video who needs to see your video and um, there's so much out there on the internet that is just being put out there for the sake of being of being out there so yeah I'll leave it at that I hope you have an incredible rest um, of your day and I will see you in the next one. Take care and stay blessed. Bye.